All right, ladies and gentlemen, right here we have the expert. This guy has worked for Homeland Security, George Washington Carver. <laughs> How you you never he's guarding your privacy all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna tell all his functions because I don't want y'all bombarding him with a bunch of stuff. But Fred McGee, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Off the Fence with Finch, my man. How are you, man? How you doing? Oh, did you just come on with the the sexy teddy bear? Ruben studded. Come on, man. Come on. Let's, let's, let's not start that. I, <laughs> I know where you're going with you that. Sexy. Okay. <laughs> Big sexy. All right. You've been waiting for that for a while, haven't I've you? I've been waiting to say that for a whole minute, man. <laughs> so today, people want to know how to guard their privacy. I think when I heard about uh, your guard your privacy, I was like, man, this stuff is phenomenal because as a security expert, you know all the ins and outs when it comes to people's security. And I think we all do a number of things, I say, exploiting our privacy and our vulnerabilities that we're not aware of. So what are you going to talk to us about tonight? Absolutely. Um, and you're absolutely right. We do a lot of things foolishly um, that exploit our own security. It also makes us vulnerable to hackers. Um, I am a what you call an ethical hacker uh, or white hat hacker, meaning uh, where I could use my skills and my ability to do great wrong. I use it for good. Um, so you're right. I do work uh, in the security realm. I've been doing it for 25 plus years now. Uh, I think I first started security when uh, year 2000 first hit us <laughs> and we thought that the world was going to end. We just didn't know that we uh, we was off by 20 years and it was going to be 2020 instead of the year 2000. <laughs> so, right. We're, we're 20 years off. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were just a little bit off on that date, but still. Um, we do a lot of things foolishly, and, and most of it is because we don't know. Uh, uh, no one has ever told us not to do these things or how to better guard your privacy. Um, uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, and I know, Mo, you will, uh, you'll appreciate this one because you and I had this conversation, wow, more than 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago, actually. Yep. Yeah. Um, we were we were both staying at the same hotel, of course, and we had the opportunity to sit down one day in the lobby. Um, something that we all do when we get a chance to travel sometime again, uh, some of us still travel for work and whatnot. But when you check into a hotel, things are a little different now because now you can use your phone, which is which is now increased security tenfold. Um, because security is a realm of something you have or something you are, meaning something you are usually is a fingerprint, uh -huh. um, the password that you have in your head, um, and we'll get to password security in just a moment. Um, but something you have can be your phone. It can be that key card that the Hilton or the Marriott or uh, the Ritz Carlton, if you're like my brother here, stay in. That's what they usually would give you to check into your room. And you would hold that key up to the magnetic door reader or you would stick it into the slot. Years ago, uh, when we first had this conversation, that key card did hold some very vital information. Uh, if you remember when you checked in, uh, the clerk or the person behind the desk would be typing furiously on a little machine, um, stick the key card into this machine, pull it out a couple of times, stick it back in and hand it to you, your key worked. What right. that machine did then was, was it encoded that key card or that magnetic strip that looks just like your credit card with some information. And that information was your name, your address, your check-in date, check-out date. And at one point, some of those key cards did hold your credit card information. Mm. That has, over the years now, they've improved the system. Um, they have taken off the credit card information and now they use a unique ID. But still you have some older hotels or some older systems that still use that older technology, which still puts your name and address on that key card. So what did you do a lot of times? If you didn't take that key card down to the front desk when you checked out, you did what they told you to do. You left it in the room. Hey, it's a safe place. The key card is in the room. No one can get to it except for the maid service. If you've walked out, if you checked out of any hotel and walked past the, the cart, 
What did you see on the cart? Towels, lotion, soap, and a box of key cards. That box of key cards was every key card that uh, maid service had picked up on that floor or any other, other subsequent floor. Uh, one time I picked up a few cards just to test something. Hooked a ski can a key a fifteen dollar key card scanner. You can get it off Amazon right now, and it's probably a little bit less with this being Prime Day. Hooked it to my laptop, scanned in the keys, and was able to pull off people's information. I pulled off addresses, some credit cards that was hashed. What I mean by hashed was credit card is sixteen digits. It may have showed me the last four, which is all I needed, or it may show me the whole card number. I also had that person's uh, address. So now I can pose as that person with the bank or the credit card company. I got the address. I can give you certain information if the credit card company asks, well, have you traveled in the last week? Absolutely. I was in the Marriott uh, in Los Angeles on this address at this date. And usually the credit card company is not going to ask you to verify very much other data. Um, now Hilton has changed that to, to name one company and I'm pretty sure Mar Marriott has followed suit, but now they have taken that information off uh, so that now it's, it's a unique ID that they code onto the cards. You no longer can pull off certain parts of information or like I said before, people are using their phones now to check into their room or um, to, to, to get into that room. Uh, that's one thing I would still suggest you do. When you check out of a hotel nowadays, take the key card with you. Trust me, it's not going to cost that hotel but 15 cents to replace it. Uh, take it home with you, destroy it just in case. Just so you don't have guys like me <laughs> that walk <laughs> past the cart <laughs> and, and, and want to test things out. Now, disclaimer. I did take the cards and I did read the information off. But because I am a security professional, I went back into the hotel, gave them those cards and explained to them what I did and gave them some pointers on what they could do to to keep that from happening to someone else. They didn't arrest you, dude. No, no, they didn't. I also left on the next flight out. So uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to give them that opportunity. I mean, you still are a black man. So, I mean, <laughs> well, you know. I, I have a lighter hue than others, so I can I can get away with things. <laughs> light skin stuff, okay. That's right. You got to give the light skin look. But... <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk about this. Is something that everybody probably watching right now or listening right now can relate to because somebody is sitting on or using their own Wi-Fi at home. Let's talk <laughs> about Wi-Fi, personal Wi-Fi security, like. You, you taught me this uh, uh, probably a year or two ago, and um, I was thinking to myself, wow, I never even thought about that. Yeah. Well, so, you know, you can go to Best Buy. Uh, once again, here's another Amazon plug, shamelessly. Uh, go to Amazon, purchase a Wi-Fi router. Uh, a lot of the new routers that come in from AT&T or Spectrum or whoever your, your cable provider is will have a password printed on the bottom. But let's talk about the ones you actually buy from these stores, the big box stores. They've changed their passwords just a little bit. But years ago, the password on the bottom was actually password or it may have been password one, two, three or password, password one, two, three, four, five, whatever the case is. Well, by laziness, a lot of people would take these these routers out of the box, plug them directly in and leave the password as it, as it is. Uh, there is a thing called war driving. Uh, it is something else I've done. It is as simple as taking a small Wi-Fi uh, antenna, putting it in your car and riding up and down streets. And as you in your house right now, if you look at your Wi-Fi, you probably can see 10 of your neighbors. And it depends on what those neighbors have done with their Wi-Fi password. You can get onto their Wi-Fi. So if they've left their password as password or as some of us do, we'll make our Wi-Fi password our address. <laughs> Who or we'll make it, trust me, I have seen it. I have seen it lately. Uh, it may be whatever your address is. Uh, it may be your, a combination of your address uh, number, your house number, and your last name. And it could be last name first, house number last. Uh, something else that we do, 
we um, make our passwords uh, our kids' names or our pets' names. Uh, we make our passwords something very simple for us to remember. You said uh, that's not right? That's not something we should do? That's absolutely wrong. We love wrong. our kids. We that's love absolutely our pets. Wrong. Listen, at the end of the day, your password should be anywhere at the least amount eight characters long. It that's should be at least. That's a lot of numbers, least, man. That's a lot of is. characters. It is. But let's think of it this way. If you eight, if you have an eight character password, and that keeps a hacker from being able to guess your password using a hash account, the actual a normal password that's six characters can be guessed by a computer using just a simple algorithm within about twenty minutes. That six digit password could cost you six digits or more in your in your in your income. It could it could cost you someone getting into your account. It could cost you losing your identity, meaning someone getting your information and now becoming you, which has happened to me. Listen to this. I am a security professional and I've had my identity stolen. This was a couple of years ago. I was going to buy something, had my credit checked and uh, the company came back and said, hey, uh, we see your home that you have in North Carolina, but do you still have your home in, in uh, Chicago? What? I, I, uh oh, somebody living a double life. It, exactly. So I had to go and find out that someone had used my identity, my name exactly, to purchase a home in Chicago, Illinois. Ooh, you got that loan money. Uh, well, it, it, it wasn't sitting in my account, that's for sure. <laughs> but it, it has taken a couple of years now to get that, ish, that issue cleaned up and, and, and cost of money, time, and everything else. So adding some digits to your password, which may unfortunately make it a little bit harder for you to remember, uh, can save you a lot of heartache. Now, you can do certain things like make your password a phrase. If, you, if your phrase is, hey, I like chicken and waffles, make it such, but don't make it, I like chicken and waffles in all alphabetic characters. Add numbers, add symbols. If you have an A, use the at symbol. If you have a one, use the exclamation point or what we call the bang symbol. You can use different symbols that will have the same phrase and meaning, but it will be harder for any hacker with a computer to guess that password. Um, is hard these days, huh? You know what? Uh, hacking has changed. And let me explain to you why I say that. Years ago, a hacker wanted to get into your bank account. They wanted your, your Bank of America, your Wells Fargo, your Chase account. They wanted your Amex number just to get in and steal your money. They can have mine. Well, well, nowadays they can have mine because a lot of times we don't have the same amount of money sitting in those accounts. Now you have investment. We don't have no money sitting in those accounts. <laughs> well, we try not to tell all our business right now. <laughs> but they, they understand now it, the game is not to get your money out of your account because that's only going to last for so long. They've got a one chance to hit your account, maybe get a couple thousand dollars and then they're gone. Okay. What they want now and what these foreign countries are paying for is your information. They want your birth date. They want your name. They want your address so they can do exactly what they did to me. They didn't steal money from me. They used my identity to buy a home. So that is what the, going, the, the, the big thing and the going rate is for now is for your information. It's for who you are. Now, here's a bad problem. If <laughs> you have bad credit, or whatever, they don't really want you. But they can still take your identity and try. Um, nowadays, if someone steals your credit card, the worst that can happen is they're gonna go buy gas. They may log on to the gaming sites and try and buy games, things of that nature. But they know they only have that one opportunity to get that purchase and be gone. They might buy porn. They might buy it, but nowadays porn is free. <laughs> oh, how you know my point being free? <laughs> I'm a security. I'm a security professional, man. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things I have to see that uh, you can't unsee. <laughs> you wish you could unsee. So, so how can our listeners guard against their personal finances when it comes to hackers? What are some key things they can do? You know what? Um, let's be really honest. Let's be very careful with our online presence. Mm. What do you mean by that? Well. We are very free with our information. If you don't believe me, log on to Facebook right now. Log on to Twitter or Instagram. Lord Jesus. <laughs> There's your kid's birthday. 
There's your birthday. There's your wife's birthday. Your girlfriend's birthday. Your dog's birthday. Your mistress's yeah. birthday. Yeah. Side chick's <laughs> birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we are very free with our information. So nowadays, it is very easy for a hacker to data mine you. What is data mining? That is discovery. That's what I would do if I wanted to hack into your system. If I wanted your life, all I have to do is log on to these social media accounts, which nine times out of 10, people ask to become part of your social media. And you say yes, because you want likes or you want follows. So if I'm putting out there, hey, today's my birthday. I'm in Cancun, Mexico, or today's whatever day, I'm at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle. You automatically know everything about my life. If you go back and look a year ago, I can say I was X place or this place or that place. People who data mine take that information and put two and two together and figure out who you are, where you live, what things you like to do, what type of things you've done, and they use that information to become you. So nowadays, when it comes to social media, we're putting so much information out there until we are making ourselves vulnerable, foolishly. That's why I made that statement before. Now, now granted, we want to all show how we're living the best life and how we're all doing all these great things. But remember, your friends are watching you and those who aren't your friends are also watching you just so they can take that data and become you. If I'm posting out there about my new Maybach, or my new Mercedes, or whatever the case is, now that hacker knows that you have at least some credit and they can use that against you as well. All right. Well, look, Fred McGee will be back here uh, once a month to help you guard your privacy, man. Thank you so much for coming on Off the Fence with Finch. And uh, if people want to uh, get in touch with you, maybe they have some questions that they weren't able to ask here today, how can they do so? Hey, listen, my social media presence, <laughs> I'm, of course, I'm on Twitter as at Fred McGee. Uh, and uh, you'll find this. I also created another uh, Twitter account that is now called at your guarding. So you can reach me there if you have questions, concerns. Hey, I'm willing to share any tools that I've, I've gained over the years. Um, send me a DM. I'll reach back out to you and I'll, I'll share that information with you. You want them to oil up and slide in your DMs? Slide on in there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Uh, you better be careful with that statement. Uh, you know. <laughs> well, Fred, thank get... you so much for uh, uh, coming on the fence, man. Thank you for getting people off the fence when it comes to their security. And uh, we'll see you on the next show, man. Absolutely, man. Have a great night. All right, guys. Up next, we have uh, Dr. Trey Curry. He's here to talk about our HBCUs in danger. That's our talk of the town. It's coming right now. Next.